You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Welcome to the show. I have Paul Angle, our library director, frequent flyer over yeah. there. We're gonna we're gonna count how many times you've been on, and then we're gonna <laughs> let you know next time. Okay. We're we're up over 500 episodes nice. now, just to promote the community and let people know all the good that happens in Brockton. Mm -hmm. And one of the places, uh, obviously, full disclosure, being on the library board, <laughs> I love the library. Who doesn't love the library? And in this day and age of digital, we're very relevant. Yes. We're a community center. Absolutely. There's stuff for kids, there's stuff for seniors, there's stuff for the community. And we're in the middle of a process to do a five-year strategic plan. That's right. Two sessions have happened already, a mm -hmm. 10 a.m. one and a evening one with a, with a consultant. And we had uh, some people from Brockton mm -hmm. show up. Yes. We'll report that later because the consultant's uh, compiling the data. And we may even offer more opportunity. But there's an online survey, There's correct? an online survey. If okay, you so just, tell people how they do that. If you just log into the website, uh, www.brocktonpubliclibrary.org, the survey will pop up. That's all you gotta do, and, and just take it and fill it out. Yep, take your. Nobody's and, collecting your. They're collecting your data, but they're not right. sell. We're not selling your name to a mailing list. No, store. no. But if you do want to sign up for a uh, to to try to win a um, Amazon Kindle Fire, we got a couple of those we're gonna give away. So. Exactly. There you go. Fill out the survey. Possibly get a Kindle. There you go. <laughs> and we still want you to read books too. But, yes. <laughs> uh, so exciting time at the library. We have new people coming on. We do. We're fully staffed thanks to the support of the city council and the mayor. Yes. Because they believe in libraries too, just like the board of trustees and our great staff and the community. So tell us about the new people that are coming on board. So we have three new professional librarians. We have a professional librarian in the, t in the uh, children's room, Jessica Files. And Jessica started in December. She comes to us with about six or eight years worth of uh, early early childhood learning. So she's she um, she has been working with teens or not teens, but, uh, uh, children in the age of five, six, seven. Mm -hmm. uh, she's going to be so she has a lot of experience with kids. She's going to be re-upping story times at the branches this month. She's going to start doing more story hours in the main library and do some outreach to the community through the uh, school systems. I think I'm going to put my kid back, kid hat back <laughs> on, come, and I, I always like a good story, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, it, that was my favorite thing in the world to do when my kids were little, yeah. was read to them. Yeah. And uh, now I read to myself, silently. <laughs> anyway, um, so we also have uh, Kelly Gates. Kelly Gates is a new reference librarian in adult services. And Kelly is going to be working and is working. She started also in December with our teen programs. She's, she's re-upped the teen advisory board. We're looking at the teen zone and replacing and upgrading some of our gear in there. And she's very motivated and, and uh, has a lot of experience working with teens. So Kelly's, Kelly's going to be uh, one of our, our premier people coming up. Teen advisory board. Uh, I kind of got started at the library. Uh, actually, a lot. You know, at the library, if you can write your name and sign mm -hmm. for it, you get a you card. Get a card. <laughs> okay, so I had mine a lot sooner than that, but my first job was at the library. So mm -hmm. I got to, paid to fetch the books, mm -hmm. and when I wasn't fetching the books, I could read them. Mm -hmm. It was a great job. Yeah. Um, and we also have uh, Thomas Ahern. Thomas Ahern. Uh, you know, Coming on in January. Yep, he's in January. reference as well. Reference as well. So okay. he's the he is the absolute newest member of our staff. He comes to us from New Orleans, Louisiana, and um, he's excited to be here. I was I met his father when they were up apartment uh, hunting, and uh, uh, we're looking forward to getting him started. And, and uh, we'll tune in more, and I'll let you know more about him as we as we get him going. He's coming to Brockton, yeah. and I've always wanted to go to Louisiana one mm. of these days. It's a great. I was city. Supposed to go there one year for a Rotary conference, and I think there was a there was a bad hurricane. Oh, that, yeah, yeah, that was the end of that. Uh, we yeah. ended up going someplace local. Uh -huh. um, and uh, continuing things that are still happening at the library, we have the Everyone Has a Voice, the right. poetry series, and that's always the third. Saturday, Saturday of the of month, the month correct? Yep. Okay. Third Saturday. Philip Asaurus has been running that for, this is the second year we've been doing it since I've been on board, but I know he's done it prior to me being here. Uh, we have poets from the Boston area. We have poets from, um, uh, poet laureates from cities and towns around Massachusetts, and we pair them up with a uh, Brockton High School or a, or a, a Massasoit School uh, poet, and we have a presentation, and it's also an open mic, so, so anybody can get up and read. Well, if the whole big event, the 
big <laughs> event that we had, the two-hour event with all the different poets and all the different languages is any indication. People should come on because some of those people mm -hmm. might be featured next year. They're going right. to do that again. Mm -hmm. And I, I enjoyed it. I, I, you know what's funny? When you're in school and you have to read poetry, mm -hmm. sometimes you might not like it as right. much. Anything I have to read, I didn't <laughs> like. And it wasn't until after I was out of school right. that I could look at stuff and read it and say, you know, gee, I really want to read this. Yeah, for me, poetry is a very much an, a hearing experience. Yes. I like to hear poetry more right. than I like to read it. The only thing I don't like about uh, the newfangled stuff is people pick these up and they decide they're going to read the poet poetry off of here. I don't let my speech <laughs> students do that. No. It's like you, 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 maybe a piece of paper and a pen <laughs> or big print and huge font, like mm -hmm. I have to read now. <laughs> But uh, that's a great event. Um, now, library is a place uh, where people make things. We have a maker space. We do. Um, we have coding at the library. We Talk do. about coding. Coding. Brockton Kids Can Code is in the children's room, and it's been running uh, Mondays and Tuesdays. Mondays, Wednesdays. Monday, Wednesday. Six to seven. Six to seven, right. and Saturday, two to three. And that's been running and, and con is continuing back in, in January through uh, the end of March. And it's it's a it's a very popular program, and and kids are working with iPads and and Mac Minis and and, and software to basically learn how to code using um, using graphical interfaces and you know moving things around with the with the iPad, and it's it's really engaging for the kids, and they've it's been a really successful grant that we we got through the um, Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners, okay. and it's an Institute of Museum and Library Services grant, which is federal money that funnels into the MBLC through, and then we get it through grant, uh, when we apply which for you grants. made sure we're still getting, because you went and lobbied the, That's the, right. the, the congressmen and the senators yeah. to keep that money That's in, right. because you know stuff trickles down from the federal level or the mm -hmm. state level yep. to the local level, otherwise the local municipality has to bear the brunt of that. Yeah. And we're lucky we're supported, like I said, from the powers that be, mm -hmm. but we also have strong support from the state legislature, right. the governor's office, the lieutenant governor was just here to yeah. give an award to the STEM kids over at Bridgewater State University last week. Mm -hmm. We covered that event. And, and, and the Brockton Library got a citation from the, from the governor. That there week. you go, and that's a good citation, not a bad that's citation. Right. So last <laughs> Lastly, we also are a place for like arts and crafts. Right. So one of our own library employees, Jennifer Belcher, is doing something. Explain it. You said it's, it to me, but I didn't <laughs> penetrate. It's called Nailed It, and what it is, it's a Pinterest-inspired craft uh, time. And and the, basically, you go on Pinterest if you if you're a Pinterest person. I'm I'm okay. not, but you if you go on Pinterest, you can see where people put their crafts that they've done. Yeah. And then Jen is finding crafts that people are doing and then replicating them locally. So it's kind of like using Pinterest to inspire, and then we put them back up on our Pinterest account. January 23rd, correct? January 23rd is when cool. that re-ups, and that's every month, too. Okay, so we'll have you back uh, mid-January, and we'll get into January and February and all the good stuff at the library. I already got the cue. Nice. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, Mark. Always a pleasure. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the City of Champions.